A regular expression is all about matching character patterns with input strings. The basic unit of such patterns are called elements or atoms, which consume one or more characters from the input string and either fails to match or continue matching with the next pattern. If you recall from our quantifiers video in regular expression series, we mentioned that such elements, which can be token, character, or group, are like X in algebra that can be substituted with something else. I am Ali from Learn Awesome, and in today's video, we shall look at various kinds of tokens, elements, or atoms that are used in regular expressions which range from simple characters to special characters and various character classes or character sets. As you can see, regex elements or atoms can assume a lot of shape and forms, from a literal character like A or B, to predefined or custom character classes via special regular expression syntaxes. All the entries in the list you see can be used as an atomic unit in the regular expression, and you can apply regex operations on these, just like you do on an individual character or letter. Reason being, letter is just another building block or atom. There's a lot of ground to cover, but I can assure you that by end of this video, you will be able to understand and apply the concepts covered in this video with ease. Note that I'll skip extensive examples and practice on regex 101, as otherwise it would get too lengthy and you would be exhausted by the end where the most important concepts are explained. So next video in series would cover the examples and practice part. Let's go over entries of this list and let's start with the most primitive of patterns that is literal characters. A literal character specifies exactly itself to be matched in input string. Referring back to definitions of atoms, each literal character would consume one character from input string, check if it matches itself. If not, it would fail the match. Otherwise, next character or characters from input string would be consumed to match the next pattern in regular expression. Now, most of characters in, say, English alphabets can be matched directly in input string and are called literal characters. The specific term isolate these characters from those that can't be matched as they have special meaning in regular expression vocabulary and syntax and can't be matched directly. We shall look at those next, but to clarify the point, note characters like a forward slash have special meaning for regular expression and act as enclosing delimiters in many languages and therefore can't be used directly. We shall look later on how they can be used via special workaround, but let's first understand what those special or syntax characters are to get the big picture. Many characters in regular expression such as quantifiers like steric, plus, etc. have special purpose in regular expressions. If you have been following our regular expression series, you would be able to recognize most if not all of those characters. Using them in a regular expression would not match the same character in input string, as regular expression parser engine would not even try to match them as characters. What if we need to do so? For that, regular expression provides us with a special tool in form of a special character. The last one in our slide, the backslash or escape character. Backslash, if prefixed with any special character, has the magical ability to strip off its special status and render it just a normal literal character. The combination of backslash followed by such letter is called an escape sequence. Examples include backslash dollar, backslash steric, backslash dot, and so on. It is also used to escape characters like new line, form feed, or tabs. In addition to that, it is also sometimes used to denote an ASCII or Unicode character within a regular expression using its ASCII or hexadecimal code. Note, Unicode characters can be specified using two-digit code using backslash X, but to use four-digit code, you use backslash U, followed by the four-digit hexadecimal code for that character in question. Since backslash has a special status itself in regular expressions and is a syntax character on its own, it too needs to be escaped if you are trying to literally match the backslash character literally. Same goes for forward slash that we discussed in earlier slide, which is a special delimiter for regular expressions and therefore also needs to be escaped with a backslash. Interestingly, there is a twist in the backslash story, which we didn't cover in last slide. How does that expression goes? Those who take power can also give power. I don't know if, it, if that's the correct phrase, but it is true for our all-powerful backslash, which can not only strip a special character of its power, it can also give special powers to certain ordinary characters. Say, prefixed with letter B, it transforms it into a word boundary, where it starts matching letters A to Z, capital A to Z, 0 to 9, and underscore. 
I feel I must emphasize here that even though double in size to ordinary letter with a backslash prefix, the escape sequences are still atoms or elements and participate in regular expression like individual alphabets too. For example, you can apply quantifiers like question or plus to backslash P, just like you can do so on B itself. This would be an underlying theme for all the elements we cover. Their size may be bloated, but at end of the day, they are still basic building blocks or atoms participating in regular expression syntax as a single unit. There are so many names for such characters and frankly, it is making the subject line look like a content line. So all names like character class escape, meta characters, meta sequences or escaped characters include some or all of the escape sequences you are seeing on the right. So let's see them one by one now. Now many of these are frequently used patterns in regular expressions and someone thought it was a good idea to make them available as a pre-built or in a quick reference sort of way to use in regular expressions in a concise form. So say backslash D is a shorthand for matching any digit from zero to nine. Backslash W as we just saw previously matches all English alphabets, case insensitive, plus digits and underscore and can extend its reach to Unicode characters in Unicode aware mode. Backslash S matches any space or line terminator like new line, which as you can imagine would be pretty difficult to do otherwise. Now going forward, you would start to realize that these and upcoming concepts borrow heavily from set theory and thus there are options and terminologies provided accordingly. So all of these three backslash D backslash W and backslash S have uppercase counterparts with a totally inverted meaning. That is, they would match anything but what backslash D, backslash W and backslash S stand for. Like backslash capital D would match any characters or alphabets except zero to nine. You use them in regular expressions if you want it to be read like I expect anything but a word in input string. Next are backslash small b and backslash big b which are word boundary and again, anything except a word boundary. To refresh the memory, word boundary means start and end of a word in input string. So backslash capital B would match anything in between a word except its two outermost letters, which would be covered by backslash small b. We have seen backslash u followed by hexadecimal code of four digit and backslash x with two digit hexadecimal code, which specify a Unicode character using four or two digits respectively. Backslash capital A, backslash capital Z, and backslash small z are supported in very few languages and are counterparts of cap and dollar sign, which are input boundary assertions for start or end of string. Finally, backslash zero is used to specify null character used in many programming languages and is available as a convenient or rather essential shorthand to use in regular expressions. The discussion of regular expression special characters cannot end without bringing in our ultra pro max wildcard, which is dot or period symbol. It would match anything except a new line character in an input string. Even the new line is not safe as regular expressions come with a special flag to even include new line character in the menu. It is mostly used with quantifiers to match content between other bounding patterns to engulf anything in between. For example, if you are trying to read contents of a paragraph tag in an HTML document, you would use dot steric between start and end paragraph tags to do so. I saved the best for the last and do pay attention as you would see this concept being used a lot in regular expressions. Character class specifies and matches any character in the list of characters between square brackets. So square bracket ABC would match letter A or letter B or letter C. It is different from literal maths. So these are all alternative options, not a word. So it won't match ABC as a single match. Now that list can be made of a single character where the character would match itself. It also allows you to provide a range. For example, the most commonly used range is A to Z or capital A to capital Z, where you provide the starting and ending character of a range separated by dash sign where starting character must be smaller than the by the second character in value, making it a range and it would match any character that falls in between. It can also contain escape sequences like backslash D, backslash W. Lastly, since it's of one or the other type matcher, 
you can provide a combination of these concepts to make a very powerful custom matcher. This is best explained by examples. So A-D G0-9 means anything in range A to D, which are letters A, B, C, and D, or letter G, or any digit. So say our input string is gladiator. It would match G because G is specified here, and also A and D letters because of the range A to D. Note that I mentioned that they would be separate matches with G flag because this is only going to match a single character. So um, the match, uh, matches in this string are all individual. Also note that we can substitute 0 to 9 with its shorthand escape sequence backslash D, and both of these character classes would work exactly the same way. Character class has a special prefix gap, which if provided in the start of the enclosed pattern would invert the meaning of character class. So like an example above, using a cap sign over here in our regular expression would start matching letters L, I, T, O, and R in Gladiator instead of the previous G, A, D, and A. Similar to uppercase backslash D, backslash uppercase W, or backslash uppercase S escape sequences. The real power of character class is unlocked if used with quantifiers. Remember, this is an atom or element, so you can directly add a steric or plus or question mark suffix to it. So let's say square bracket ABC would not match the input string ABC as a single match, but square bracket ABC plus would. Since character classes are like a set of elements, and I mentioned many set theory constructs are applicable in regular expressions, so here again we have the option to do intersection and subtraction operations on character classes using double ampersand and minus symbols. You can perform intersection operation using double ampersand with operands being character classes. So in the given example, we have a character class with range A to Z covering all alphabets but we are intersecting it with a character class comprised of all alphabets except vowels. So the overall regular expression would match any alphabet except a vowel. I picked this example to cover both character classes, negative character classes, as well as intersection. And if you get it, it is really powerful customization mechanism. We also have subtraction available. So rather than using a negative character class, which means a character class with this cap symbol, we could also use the hyphen or minus sign to exclude vowels from our range in outer character class for all alphabets. So again, both examples would result in exactly the same behavior, just the operators applied on it are different. Unfortunately, there is very limited support for these two operators in regular expression parsers. So whatever platform you're using regular expressions on, you must first check if these operators are supported before making them part of your regular expressions. Caption groups are patterns enclosed within parentheses that act like a grouping operator, allowing you to treat the entire thing as a single atom or element in regular expression. You can apply, say, quantifiers on that or use these in assertions. Now, before I describe it further, note that there would be a separate video in our regular expression series on capturing groups. So I'm just doing some reintroduction because caption groups create an atom or element and that is what we are covering in this one. Moving on, most people use capturing groups just for this reason only, but another interesting ability of capturing group is that they are evaluated to a matched value that can later be reused in regular expression as a back reference or as a return value in code, which can use as per your use case. We shall introduce back references in just a minute, so hang on. Regular expressions assign a number to each capturing group, and that numbering is done based on order of opening parentheses from left to right. Now, note caption groups can be nested, but the ordering or numbering mechanism stays the same. Order of opening parentheses from left to right. Finally, let's go over a quick example where I use a character class within a caption group. Cool, right? I also applied a quantifier at the end as a cherry on top. Now this matches input string AB as a single match, and the return value for caption group is B. Can you pause and think why? All right, so remember, AB in square brackets means either A or B. So when evaluating input string AB, first letter A would be matched and would be successful. Then letter B would be matched and would be a success too. 
But since there has to be a return value which is just a single value and not an array, the later result would overwrite the former. And the last character matched by this capturing group was B. So that would become the return value for the capturing group as a whole. Don't worry if you are still struggling. I'll explain with multiple examples in its dedicated video. You can also refer to our earlier regular expression assertions video where capturing group was used in example and explained to death. Lastly, capturing groups have two additional flavors, non-capturing groups and named capturing groups. The former is used if you are not interested in the return value as it acts as a pure grouping operator only, which is the most common use case for capturing groups in general practice. The later, however, goes one step beyond capturing groups. And in addition to return value being accessible using capturing group numbering system, it also allows you to assign a name to the capturing group. So during back referencing, you can use the name as well as number to refer to the value. I'll stop here as this is enough introduction in summary form, details to follow in another video. So let's quickly look at what back references are. So back reference is a way in regular expression to reuse the captured value of a capturing group later on in regular expressions. Back reference, again, is an atom or element, and it matches the same text and input string as the capture or result value of the referenced group. The syntax is really simple. That is a backslash followed by number of capturing group being, being referenced. And you can imagine that backslash one, backslash two would be replaced by result or captured value of that group in regular expression. I'll use a simple example here. So we have two capturing groups in the start, first one being foo in parentheses and second one is bar in parentheses. And as you can imagine, the resulting values would be foo and bar for these groups respectively. So the first capturing group can be back referenced using backslash one, which would translate to foo and backslash two referencing to second capturing group would evaluate to bar. I deliberately switched the sequence of usage of back references near the end to avoid any confusion in understanding. Backslash two would hypothetically be replaced by bar in regular expression followed by foo. And it would match the input string foo bar hello bar foo as a single match. This brings us to end of discussion on regular expression elements or atoms. We could only cover the topics, but such concepts are best absorbed by examples. Unfortunately, there, are, there were too many concepts to allow example and practice to be done in the same video. So next video will fill that void. We tried to go over the introductory concepts about capturing groups, but there is still much left to absorb. So we shall do that in an upcoming video in the regular expression series. I hope you were able to understand how regular expression use these building blocks to match patterns and input strings. If you did, please do give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to be notified of upcoming content like this. And do check out our other videos in our regular expression course playlist on Learn Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.